Hi, I'm Lynn. I'm Stuart. We're High Five Pig. Yes, we are. <laughs> we haven't been here for a couple of weeks, have no, we? No, we haven't. No, um, we've been, where have we? We went to Amsterdam and Eindhoven. Yes, and you caught a dose of the side trance. I got really nasty dose of the side trance, so I really appreciate all the thoughts and prayers that really helped me get better as well from the side trance. Good. <laughs> anyway, she wasn't very well, um, so we missed a couple of weeks. Uh, but she's all right now, apparently. Yeah, apparently. So all is good. Um, and since we've come back, it's just been hectic. Busy, busy. Really, really busy. I know we're busy all the time, but it's been really, really hectic since we got back. But it's all good fun. Um, well, we covered in two weekends between us and Eric and Oscar and Jula. We covered four hi-fi shows over two weekends. So the one in Singapore? The one in Singapore, that was Jula, the High End mm -hmm. Asia, um, which is pretty amazing from uh, all accounts. That was a good report. Yeah, very good report. Um, Oscar went to the UK show in Daventry, and that was a very good report he did for that. Mm -hmm. And Eric did a cracking set of reports from the Ascot show, didn't he? Yeah, and didn't Oscar do a report from Yeah, that he did well? a head fire one as well from that as well. Yeah, so we've, done, uh, we've covered absolutely two, Yeah, masses. two weeks, four shows, three different countries. So, And we're off to Warsaw. Very much looking forward to yeah. Warsaw. One of my favourite shows, and if you, I, I say this about loads of shows, there are there's loads of really good shows, but the Warsaw show is bloody cold, but <laughs> oh, it's usually cold. Um, it's just absolutely massive. Um, it's second only to Munich in the size of the show in Europe, so you can imagine it's huge. And the news is coming thick and fast. I've just been speaking to Jeff. Uh, of Joseph Audio. Joseph Audio. Uh, he's got news coming. He's going to be there from America. News is just coming thick and fast from it. And uh, it sort of goes to show the work that Adam and his team put into that show as to the sort of uh, level that it's held at. And it, it is second to only Munich in the UK. Um, Europe. In, sorry, Europe. It's absolutely massive. If you've never been go. Um, it's in two hotels, the Sobieski, the Golden Tulip, which I love the name, the Golden <laughs> Tulip for some reason. I don't know why. And then there's the National Stadium as well. And the cats just come in. The people that go to the show, um, it's really interesting actually, Poland, because it's had this need for people that were into music and audio. Not only did they have to uh, smuggle uh, Western records in during the sort of Soviet period. But they also had to make do with what they could get in from the West, but also a lot of DIY. And out of that DIY culture in Poland has come some really interesting brands. Um, we use a lamp is there, I think, um, Lampazeta are a really good example of that. Um, but Vinius, whose uh, preamplifier we use in the system at the moment, they seem to have come out of that whole DIY thing. And it's really interesting. People are so passionate about it and so into it. And the old, uh, Adam, I think, always gives a room over to, and we've covered them in the past, to the, DIYists. To yeah. DIYists. So you, and they tend to have some really interesting mad stuff, don't they? Yeah, you get to see some really interesting stuff. Anyway, I don't think we should yadder on for too long because the news this week, because we've been away for so long and there is just so much of it, is fairly long. So here's the news. First seen at High in Munich 2023. The new Acoustic Energy Corinium is a culmination of a three-year project for the British Hi-Fi brand. Suitable for medium to large sized listening environments, Corinium will be available in real wood veneer, matte black, matte white and metallic British racing green cabinet finishes next month from £6,000 per pair. British hi-fi brand Cambridge Audio has unveiled new black editions of its latest network streamer MXN10 as well as the DAC Magic 200M. The black on black finish is in response to customer demand and costs the same as the lunar grey finish. Gig Acoustics slap fuse the series acoustic panels 
offer control of echoes and reverberations as well as solutions for the effective absorption of low frequency resonances. Launched at the Dutch Audio event earlier this month, the Slat Fuser series features natural oak veneer, while the option to stain the slats opens up endless possibilities whether at home or in the professional studio. Metronome Callista has unveiled the DAC design to fit with their SACD Transport Dreamplay X, the new Callista Mantax DAC. The Mantax features the luxurious and distinctive Callista design from the high-end French Hi-Fi brand. The communication between Dreamplay X and Mantax is ensured by Callista's proprietary I2S signal for perfect native sound reproduction. The digital to analog conversion is performed by two separate lines of AKM and ESS processors. Tube and solid state analog outputs are in parallel. Callista Mantax costs €59,000. Following the launch earlier this year of the Livehorn brand and the Livehorn Grand Horizon, the French hi-fi manufacturer has launched the Livehorn Orion, which is a more compact, active three-way loudspeaker model with digital phase correction. The Livehorn Orion is made from oiled solid beach, acrylic resin, oil tinted MDF and wax concrete and costs €18,900. Swiss producer Nidal Audio Lab has announced the launch of its new Merison Roos DAC. The printed circuit board responsible for conversion and buffering has a six layer construction to prevent interference from occurring. The Merison Roos DAC has a price of €4,900 in Europe. In the UK, the Roos will launch at an initial special price of £4,950 and is scheduled to arrive with order distribution in November. Moon River Audio of Sweden has announced a new model, the 505 Hybrid Phono Stage. It contains six separate power supplies and is a dual mono design. The Moon River 505 features four inputs with every possible adjustment on the fly. It also saves your settings automatically for each individual input. Retail price is €4,990. Neat Acoustics has announced the availability of the third model in their Classic range. The Neat Mystique Classic stands at 78cm tall, making it one of the most compact and discreet floor standards on the market. The prototype Mystique was revealed at High End Munich and it also made an appearance at the Northwest Audio Show at Cranage Hall in pre-production form. Available in satin white, textured black, natural oak and American walnut, Mystique is available now for £2,475. PMC is introducing a product upgrade for owners of the original FACT8 and FACT12 loudspeakers to elevate them to FACT signature performance levels. This retailer-provided service replaces the original FACT series crossovers with the improved signature circuits and costs £2,295 for the FACT8 and £3,995 for the FACT12. The handmade limited edition Project Dark Side of the Moon turntable, complete with LED backlit rainbow, honours Pink Floyd's 1973 release and lands in UK stores this month. It costs £1,599 and is available through Henley Audio's dealer network in the UK. PSB Speakers has announced the launch of a new generation of the PSB Imagine Series speaker line, designed to be affordable and to fit both home cinema and hi-fi setups. Making their debut at the Toronto Audio Fest this weekend, the B50 Bookshelf, T54 and T65 Tower speakers feature a Linkwitz Riley 4th Order crossover design and cost from £599 to £1,699. Studio Connections has launched two new subwoofer cables, the Sublink LFE and Sublink High Level. Sublink LFE is an RCA connection from an LFE dedicated subwoofer output channel and costs from £269. The Sublink High Level features a high level speak on connection plug and a choice of banana or spade plugs and costs from £150. British hi-fi brand Viterre has launched the new X-Trax and Dark Sabre cartridges. The Viterre X-Trax is a moving coil cartridge costing £5,800. 
and the moving magnet Vertair Dark Sabre is £1,450. Both will be available at the end of October. The Borison X2 loudspeaker is the smaller sibling of the entry-level range X3 and X6 floor standards. At the heart of the Borison X2 is a fusion of technologies adopted from the M, O and Z series. It is equipped with the X-Series Borison ribbon tweeter and two 4.5-inch Borison X-Series speaker drivers. The distinctive cabinet design in piano lacquer finish with its carbon fibre inserts makes it easy to recognise that the X2 speakers belong to the X-Series. Costing €8,000 or US dollars the Borison X2 is available from November 2023. All right, that was the news that was. Um, some really interesting stuff this week. And apologies if, if we look like we've moved around, but we're having a bit of camera trouble, so hey ho. Um, technical gremlins. Technical gremlins. Some very interesting news this week. Yes, the Boris and M2. Uh, sorry, X2. Yeah, they're great. Um, I don't know if they're great yet. but uh, Well, we didn't get to hear them yet, but Jula heard them in Singapore because they had sort of a soft launch at the Singapore show. So they're the current entry level into the audio group denmark loudspeaker world um how much are they about six grand or so eight thousand eight thousand um very similar to the x3s yeah the, the smallest version you've got the x3s and the larger x6s and then oh, you've got the me. x2 and the x6s will be arriving here when we get back from Warsaw and in Warsaw. Munich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the X2 looked very, very interesting. Eight grand. I foresee a stand mount coming. Yeah, there's got to be an X1 coming. Got to be an X1 and it's got to be a stand mount, I yeah. reckon. Got to be happening. Uh, what else was in the news? The Moon River Fono stage. Yes. That looked interesting. Um, and there seems to be a bit of a trend towards Fono stages now that do loads and loads and loads of different stuff mm, on the fly. The, uh, gold Note ones. The Gold Note ones. There's quite a few different ones um, out there that do that at the moment. So what else was the? the oh, the um, Pink Floyd Dark, Dark Side of the Moon project turntable has finally sneeze, been so I released. If I, if I look like <laughs> You've caught the side trance. I've caught the side trance. <laughs> um, yeah, the project turntable. We saw this as a concept. They were calling it at Munich. Um, where it actually had like a little um, prism record clamp on it as well. But that's gone now. It's actually a production version. Apparently they had it at Ascot and then it's been released this week. So, and people love that. They do a lot of these um, artist collaboration turntables done like the Beatles and Metallica and Rolling Stones, I think, and quite a few others. And it's a clever idea because if you're a massive fan of that band, why not have a turntable to sort of celebrate that fact? I think they're a little bit gimmicky, but I understand why they make them. I understand why people buy them. Uh, not for me. Uh, how much are they? About 1,500 quid? Uh, yeah, about 1,500, 1,600 quid. What else have we got? Um, what else have we got? The gig panels, they're in ah, the wild now. With yeah, the... Um... Slat Fusor. Flat, yeah, <laughs> flat shoes. Or what? Yeah, that one. Um, <laughs> Sounds really, like a villain from something. Really interesting uh, product, and um, if if you don't know what GIK or Gick as we call them, um, they they make acoustic panels mainly for studios, but also for the home. And I think these new um, panels they've got sort of uh, well, you can see the pictures in that you've just seen. It's like oat veneered slats. On a black background, but you can have the oak veneer stained to whatever colours you fancy. And they're seamless, so you can have yeah. loads and loads and loads of them on a wall. And make and a wall of them. I thought that was really cool. Very clever, very cool. Saves on decorating as well. It which does. I think is it really means you don't have to paint, does it? You just put Absolutely. more acoustic panels. <laughs> yeah. What else? Um, the Viter cartridges. I thought they looked interesting. Yeah. The, the, I've not heard the moving coil cartridges from Viter in our system, so I can't really comment about them. No. Uh, but we did have the original Sabre. Uh, yes. And I thought that was a cracking cartridge for a movie magnet cartridge. Uh, so now there's the Dark Sabre, mm -hmm. and 
I think the original saber was just under nine hundred quid. The dark sabers, I think, fourteen fifty. Okay. Um, one thousand four hundred fifty, not fourteen fifty pounds, oh. <laughs> obviously. Um, and then the um, extracts which is the moving coil one, is just under six grand, I think. So quite a chunk of money. But quite Viter, a chunk of money, but... So we put the news up. Um, every day we choose a pick of the day. And one of those picks of the day was the Verte cartridges. And somebody made a comment about it being very expensive for a moving magnet cartridge. And I get that. But by the same token, Verte is never going to be cheap, is it? No. And... That's what they do. They do turntables and cartridges yeah. and everything analog and to do with records. So they even make records. So the French people have been very busy. The French people have. The French have yes. with the uh, live horn. Yeah, the new Orion. So we announced. I think live horn were new this year. New company set up this year, and they had this massive, big active horn system called the Grand Horizon. And now Loads they've of got DSP yeah, and everything built in. Now they've really got the Orion, which is more of a column, sort of compact. Um, but all the amps in there, all the uh, DSP and everything. 16, 18 grand? 18, just under 19 grand in euros. Yeah, cool. So, yeah. And yeah, Callista. The Callista, yeah. Mantax. The Callista Mantax stack, which is made to go with their Dreamplay yeah. X SACD transport. So it's got the same design, the same sort of almost triangular design, all sort of beautiful perspex and stunning looking thing. A fortune. 60 grand. 60 yeah. grand, but so it's unobtainium for us. Yeah. But it's one I of those... just love the, uh, how completely mad and mental and out there yeah. all the Callista stuff is. And it's just yeah, iconic. You see it and you know who's made it, so... It's a very, I'm very... looking at the uh, what else we've got because <laughs> uh, my eyes are uh, not working. Uh, so we've got Neat Mystique. Ah, the Neat Mystiques, yes. Yeah, that, that's another thing that was at Munich as a prototype, and yeah, then at Cranage. A lot of time for neat speakers tend to be quite small. They are, but they always look and sound really great. Hot hats excuse are just... the cats are just. Been closing answers. in on us. They have both been fed, but they're circling. So anyway, the neat speakers that were announced or a prototype in Munich are now out. And I made the mistake of saying that for a small speaker, they sound great, of a speaker that the, I think it was the IOTA from years mm. ago. And I was corrected. It's a small, it's a great sounding speaker that happens to be small, I was correct yeah. to uh, say. The sort of speaker, if you heard them with a blindfold on, you'd swear you were sat in front of a big pair yeah. of speakers. But they're really, they're, they're really well designed for sort of modern living. So if you've not got the room for massive speakers, you can have something that sounds incredible and is a floor stander. And they're made in the northeast of England. They are, so yes. So I've got a lot of time for neat. Yeah, and Bob's a really nice guy. And he plays guitar. He and he does. sings. He does all his own so, music and stuff as if well. If you look for Bob Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yeah. Sturgeon on YouTube. He's got, I'll put a link down below because it's, it's really cool. And uh, he sings all these sort of folky type songs and he's very good on the guitar. He's a very good voice. Uh, I quite like that. Yeah, what very else cool. Have we got? Um, what else have we got? Um, things that are launching at Warsaw. Okay. Um, last year when we were at Warsaw, we came across a Lithuanian company called Silent Pound, which I thought was a bit of an odd name for a hi-fi company, but that's the name. Is it a comment on Brexit? <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, they had last year the pre-production model of their Challenger speaker, um, which is quite a mad looking thing you'll see it in still put the link to the news in the uh in the notes down below it's but the white thing isn't it the, yeah, yeah with like um they're kind of they're open baffle partially and then they've got the crossover has all got um glass over it so you can see it oh how cool um and a horn but they've refined the horn mid-range and everything in there and we really liked them, we found them very dynamic. And they were playing something like, I think we were playing Michael Jackson when we went in. So they were not right. playing audiophile music at all, which was 
Very cool. So next week, we are on Friday. Well, we leave on Thursday, but on Friday, we will be covering the show. Yeah, the show, the Warsaw show starts Friday at midday. Don't forget that. <laughs> the number of times we... we've got up to start the show at like 10 o'clock and then go, oh, no, it doesn't start till 12. And we're not the only ones. No, we're not. Out. Every year, it starts at 12 on the Friday. Every year, we forget. Yes, this but is true. But it doesn't start at 12 on the Saturday or the Sunday. No, so 12 till 8 on the Friday. Yeah. Saturday is 10 till 8 and the Sunday is 10 till 6, I believe. Yeah. And that's Central Warsaw. There's the two hotels, but they also have a bus, a free shuttle bus that runs you out to the National Stadium, which I think is about, is it about 15 minutes away on the bus? Yeah. Um, but even if you don't get the bus, it's like Ubers are about, a quid to go anywhere in yeah, it's, also it's great it's for just getting outrageously about. cheap to get about it's outrageously cheap to eat in warsaw there's really good vegan and vegetarian loads restaurants. of vegan restaurants it's out loads of cool places outrageous yeah so if you see us at the show say hello um we're obviously going to be busy but we always love to meet people i remember one year when we were at warsaw and we met a young chap in the lift at the stadium, I think, and he said that he learned all his technical English by reading High Five Pig reviews and Not news. Not listening to me. <laughs> so, I usually need an interpreter yes. for uh, people that speak English. <laughs> Mind you, that's usually for the Americans. Yes. <laughs> so that was the news that was for this week. Thanks very much for joining us. We will be doing something next week. We don't know quite where from or how we're going to uh, make it happen, but we will make it happen Yeah, somehow. we'll do something. Uh, it quite possibly is going to be from the show, so it'll be a bit sort of... Maybe like we did in Hong Kong. Yeah, we'll do something. That should be cool. See you next week. Bye. Bye.